service this morning. We're going to be doing some songs you may have heard on the radio or we've sung here in church before. We invite you to stand. This, uh, we may invite you to stand or you may want to stand on your own as we begin singing. This first one I know you'll want to, so let's, let's sing this together.
In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Without form and empty, darkness was over the surface of the deep. The Spirit of God hovered over this boundless expanse, a limitless vast of holy waiting, creation on the verge of dawn, heaven pressing into earth. Let there be. God delighted, revealing, cradling dust and dirt, he breathed life into being. From the beginning, God desired to entwine human and divine, setting our mortal hearts with eternal longing. He called us his own as we walked in the garden, leaving his throne for the mud and the clay. Our deepest shame, our darkest fears, could not hinder heaven's appearance. So his spirit hovered over a quiet womb, the Father's seed in bloom, hope infusing the weary world. God making his way humble, coming beside us as we stumble through, a light that shines in the dark that cannot be conquered. Let there be. And so it began. The Son of God and the Son of Man offered himself as the way of salvation. Jesus, man of sorrows, the son of suffering. The perfect son of God in all his innocence. Walking in the dirt with you and me. He knows what living is. He's acquainted with our grief. Man of sorrow, son of suffering. Some imagine you a distant and removed. But you chased us down in merciful pursuit. To the sinner you were grace, and the broken you embraced. It's in the end, the proof is in your wounds. Yes, in the end, the proof is in your wounds. gave up his spirit, the earth trembled in awe. Creation groaning, knowing surely this was the Son of God. Is it finished? Waiting for done, the earth paused and witnessed. Then the rocks cried out their hollowed response. Creation, inspired by the breath of God, cracked with the brilliant light of eternity. Let there be Christ in glory, trampling death by death, rising in victory. Was and is and is to come, the Son of God and Son of Man, who was and is and is to come, Jesus, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Your cross, my freedom, your stripes, my healing, for praise, King Jesus, glory to God in heaven, your
Aubrey. <laughs> we didn't rehearse this. Um, but we're married, and I get to help lead this church, and I'm so excited to have you guys here on this Easter Sunday, where we're going to be celebrating a bunch of baptisms at the end of this service. And so, welcome. And we're going to invite you into our um, reading. Before we do the reading, we do recognize this is a family service, so all generations are in here. We do have nursery for up to age two available. Um, but if you're feeling a little squirmy, um, you and your parent, or you and your kid, can go um, to the back. Um, we have grace space in the back, all right? Um, and so we invite you to um, participate in that grace space. But truly, it's all grace space because God is here offering each one of us grace for us, which is awesome. So, Aubrey? Welcome, friends. Here we are, the family of God. Welcome, Welcome friends. friends. Here, here he is, is the, the triune, triune God. God. The Father who welcomes us no matter our age, race, or gender. The, the Son who died, died and rose for us so, so that, that we can live, live like him. him. The Spirit Spirit who gives us wisdom, power, and love to live like Him. On this Easter Baptism Sunday, let us affirm that we believe with Christians here and everywhere by reciting the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Can I get an amen? Amen. Praise to the Spirit who's living in us when I 
Jesus, we do proclaim with you today, or well, we don't proclaim, but we do proclaim with you today, with heaven and earth, that you are King Jesus, that you bore the cross and you beat the grave. And Jesus, we praise you for that. We praise you for conquering death. We praise you for conquering the grave. We praise you that justice won over injustice, that love won over death, and that light won over darkness. We praise you for conquering our fear. The fears that we, some of us carried in here today, Lord, that you've already conquered them. The burdens that we carry, that you've already taken care of them. You have already overcome all of the things in our life, and so we bring them to you this morning. We praise you for the work that you have done on the cross. We praise you that you came down to walk alongside of us in our suffering so that you would know what it was like to be with us, to show us that, you would, that we would never walk through it alone. We praise you that you identified with us. We praise you that you saw us first so that we would see you. That's right. And now we want to identify with you. We want to live a life of resurrection. That's right. We don't want to just celebrate your resurrection on Easter Sunday. We want to celebrate it outside of these walls. And we leave here today and every other day. We want to show people the hope that you have given us, the peace that you have given us. We want to go to the places of injustice and show justice. We want to go to the places where there is death and show your love. We want to go to the places where there is fear and show that there is another way, that you have already conquered it. Thank you. Thank you. Show us how to do it. Grace us with the ability to do it. Give us the courage and the boldness to be able to proclaim you and show your hope in all of the spaces that are dark. We pray for the people today that don't know you. Everybody has a, a name that probably came to mind this morning. We bring that name to you, Jesus. We're trusting you with that person. And we, and we just pray that your, your grace would just lead them. Lead them to your freedom. Lead them to the path of life and love one step, one choice. And we pray that we would be people who would come alongside of you in that plan, that we would be proclaiming your freedom and that, and that the world would see that there's something different because if we're not showing that there's something different, nobody knows that there's another way. And so, Lord, give us the ability to be able to do that. And Jesus, we know that the first time that you came, that it was quiet. And we know that when you rose from the grave, it was still, there, there was a celebration amongst your friends, but they were confused. But the next time you come, the whole world will see you in your glory and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And we cling to that hope today, Lord. We cling to the hope that you're coming back and that we will have a final resurrection where all things are made new. And in the meantime, let us partner in the work of making things new right now because eternal life starts today through the power of your resurrection. In the name of the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, amen. amen. Let's stand again and sing a song together. It was finished on that cross, amen. Sing it out. How I love the voice of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. He declares his work is finished. He has spoken his hope to me. Though the sun has ceased its shining, though the war appeared as lost, Christ has triumphed over evil. It is finished upon that cross. Now the curse it has been broken. Jesus paid the price for me. Holy mark he has offered, great the welcome that I receive. Holy I approach my Father, clothed in Jesus' righteousness. There is no more guilt to carry, it was finished upon that cross. Celebrate this next verse together. Death was once my great opponent. Fear once had a hold on me. But the Son who died to save us rose that we would be free indeed. Amen. I think we should sing that again. Here we go. Let's try that again. Here we go. 
Let's continue our praise, and we're going to praise and worship Jesus this morning through our tithes and offering at this time. We believe that God is good. We feel his presence today. We feel his presence. We have felt his presence all week long, and we know that he is good, and we believe that all good things come from him, and we want to praise him for that and worship him for that by giving our tithes and offerings to him. And at this time, we're going to do that, but the way we do it here at Still Meadow is we have boxes at our exits right there and there when you leave. They're called our joy boxes. And as you leave, we um, welcome you to put any tithes or offerings that you have in our joy boxes. Or you can give online. If you go to our website, stillnaz.com, you can find a give button. And there's lots of ways that you can give online and through texting. And we thank you for your tithes and offering because we believe that God is going to use those to spread his word into our people of our church, into York, into the, our nation and our world. That is what that is for. And we're going to pray for that right now, that God will bless this offering. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank, thank you. Your presence that we thank feel. you for your presence that we feel. Thank you for how good you are. Thank you for how good you are. Can't even list all the good things you've done all this week, and I thank you for this week. And I thank you. This time we want to worship you. This time we want to worship you for who you are by giving back to you, by giving back to you. Your ties and our offerings, your ties and our offerings, and you will. And you will. My name is Pastor Rachel, and I'm the My name is Pastor Amy Jones, and I'm the Still Meadow, and I welcome 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 kind of party that we have as we gather both of our campuses together and we worship together, we baptize um, those who are decided to follow Jesus with their life, and then we have um, food trucks and we have bounce houses and face painting and all those fun things, and we just have a fun day together. So if you can mark your calendars for August 25th so that you can come to our Welcome Bash. It is going to be at our York City campus this year. If this is your first time here, I want to welcome you, and I want to invite you to fill out a connection card. There's one in your bulletin, and you can drop that off in our joy boxes on your way out, or you can go online to our website, stillnaz.com backslash or slash connect, and you can fill out our connect card there. We want to get to know you because we are a family here at Still Meadow, and we want to get to know you a little bit better. So please fill out our connection card. We have something else coming up this summer, a little earlier, and it is our Vacation Bible School. Vacation Bible School is a fun time that we have here where we invite all the kids from our church and our community to come here for four evenings, and we get to teach them how much Jesus loves them and how much Jesus wants to be their best friend forever. 
we have so much fun with the kids this week. Um, if you want to look in your bulletin, there is a flyer there with the correct dates. It's actually in, Jul in June, not July. So come in June. Um, and so, but if you look at that flyer in your bulletin, and if you don't have one, you can get one on your way out. There's all the information because our registration is open now. So I invite you to register your children, your grandchildren, or tell your neighbors and your friends that they can register for Vacation Bible School now. Also means we need a lot of volunteers. You don't need to have any experience. We need lots of helper roles too. So if you can help at Vacation Bible School, we invite you to go onto our website and you can sign up right there. Help us as we tell the kids how great Jesus is. Also, our kids ministry is growing and it's so exciting. We are so excited to see that, but it also means that we need volunteers. So we invite you to come and serve in kids ministry and we will train you and we will help you with that. And you can go to our website and you can sign up for that on our website. All right. Well, guess what? At this time, I get to teach the kids a fun lesson. So I'm going to invite all of our kiddos to come on up and have a seat on the floor, just be on this side of the baptismal so that you can actually see my experiment. Come on up, get some water. Keep coming over this way. You want to make sure you're past the baptismal. Hey, buddy, can you back up for just one second just so that we can get this table up here? I always like to give some kind of an experiment to teach this lesson. Thank you so much. <laughs> Y'all here already? All right. All right. Well, I have a fun story to tell you, but it's not just fun, it's amazing, and it is the best story ever, and it's true, and it's the reason why we are celebrating Easter. It's the story how Jesus came for you to love you and to be your best friend forever, and Jesus died on the cross, and then he was dead for three whole days, and then he rose again, and we get to live with him forever because of that. It's such a great story. Okay, but I'm going to use this to tell you the story. This is a tea bag. You guys ever seen one of these before? Anyone here drink tea? All right. Wow, there's a lot of you this time. Anyone here have a parent or a grandparent that drinks tea? You can drink it hot or you can drink it iced, right? Okay, so this is a tea bag, and you would put this in water, either hot or cold, and it takes a little bit, and then it turns the water dark, right? And then um, it is great tea. Well, I'm going to use everything on this tea bag to tell you the story, okay? First, I'm going to take the label off. All right. The first thing I took out was this string. You see, the day that Jesus died on the cross, before that, they beat him and they whipped him with whips. And this string reminds us of that, that he was hurt. They really hurt him, that he let them hurt them because he knew that he was doing it to save you. So the string reminds us of the pain that Jesus went through because he loves you so much. This is the staple that you guys saw me taking out. It's really tiny. I don't know how to it's a little staple. You guys have seen the staple, right, on a piece of paper. So it's a staple, and it's very sharp, right? And this reminds us of the nails that they put in Jesus' hands and his feet when they put him on the cross. That's how they got him to stay. They put the nails in, and the staple reminds us of the, how sharp it was, of the nails as they did that. And Jesus had scars there because that's how painful it was. Jesus was in a lot of pain, but he did that because he loves you so much. Now, you saw this label I took off? When they put him on the cross, they put a label over his head, and it said, King of the Jews. Hmm, but it wasn't to be nice. They were mocking him. They were making fun of him, saying, look at you on the cross, but you think you're the King of the Jews. They weren't being nice to him. They labeled him, and they were being mean to him. But Jesus did it because he loves you, 
And guess what happens? When you ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins, he takes any label that you have put on yourself that's mean or anything that somebody else has ever called you, the labels that might have been put on you, Jesus removes them and he gives you a new label and it's child of God. And you are the child, a child of God, and you are in his family when you give your heart to Jesus. He takes off those bad labels, and he gives you the best label ever, child of God. All right. Now, in this tea bag is tea, okay? See how dark it is? All right, I'm going to dump it out. You guys ready to see it when it falls out? like dirt. That represents the sin that we have in our life. Anytime that we do something that we're not supposed to do, that's not what Jesus wants us to do, it's called sin. And it makes us dirty like that inside. And we can't be with Jesus when we have all that sin. And so when Jesus died on the cross, he took, he died to take all that sin away from us. And when we ask him to forgive us, he does. And he takes that sin away from us and out of us. And look, then you can become clean inside, right? Now, when you're walking with Jesus and he's made you clean, sometimes we still mess up. Sometimes we still sin, right? And then we can just ask Jesus to forgive us, and then we repent, which means turn away and try not to do it anymore. But you know what? Sometimes that could be hard. So we were given a special gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in our heart, and he helps us every day say no to sin and yes to Jesus. And we are able to rise above our sin with, Jesus, with the Holy Spirit's help. So we talked about how Jesus died on the cross. We talked about how he went into the grave, and three days he was dead. So sad. But he rose again, right? And because of that, we can have salvation with him, and we are able to then rise again with him, right? And we are able to rise above our sin with the Holy Spirit's help and guidance, right? And so I want you guys to watch this experiment. You ready for this? Okay. Let's see if it works. Um, you, you got it, Shine. I need you to stay down on the floor this time, okay? You'll see it. Trust me. You don't have to. Jesus died. On the cross, and he was dead for three days. But on the third day, what happened? He rose again, right? And because he rose again, we are able to rise above the sin in our life with the Holy Spirit's help. Isn't that the best news ever? I told you I had the best story ever to tell you. And what we need to do. What we need to do is we need to say yes to Jesus and tell him that we believe that he died on the cross and ask him to forgive our sins and then live for him our very best every single day. So let's pray and let's thank Jesus for this gift that he's given us. Let's fold our hands. Let's pray. Dear God, oh, thank you so much. Thank you for the gift that you have given us. Jesus, thank you for coming and dying on the cross and going through all that pain so that we can live with you and be your best friend forever. Thank you. Thank you for giving us a new label. Thank you for making us clean. And thank you for helping us rise above sin. We love you so, so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, guys. If you already got a worship bag today, um, you guys can go back to your seat. If you didn't get a worship bag yet, Miss Trudy has them right over here. So you can pick one up on your way back to the seats. Kids. Can we say thank you to Pastor Rachel for that awesome um, illustration? And let's thank God for the awesome story that we have been given in Jesus Christ. Can we say thank you, God? So, um, hi. Today is Baptism Sunday. Whoop, whoop. Okay. And um, we have nine people being baptized in this service. Praise God. 
and all but one are under the age of 20. What? Okay. Um, so my message is going to be brief because their testimonies are going to be this, the stories that we're writing this week, okay? But we're going to ask them the questions that you see on the screen behind me. We're going to ask them, do you believe that Jesus' death on the cross cleans you from your past sins and saves you for eternal life with him? And then we're going to ask, do you intend to rely on God to give up sin? And then we're going to ask, will you every day with God's help and show his love with your life? And when they say yes to those three questions in front of us, we're going to dunk them. And it's a symbol of um, death with Christ and resurrection with him. Now, we haven't worked out how to get people to float to the ceiling like that teabag did. So you're just going to have to see the symbolism and rejoice. And when they come out of the water, rejoice. Say hallelujah. Say bingo. Say praise God. Because we are witnessing a miracle. God has been at work in each one of their lives, right? Since the moment of their conception, he has been conspiring for them to understand his love and to give their lives to his way of love. And so right now, today, they're publicly proclaiming that what Jesus did 2,000 years years ago by conquering death, they want to be a part of today and forever. And so that's something worth rejoicing about. And so a couple, a couple other housekeeping things. Next Sunday, we have um, our district assembly. And at the end of our district assembly, they have a service on the ministry where people are ordained or given their first district license. And we have two people from our church, one who serves at our York City campus and one who grew up in our youth ministry and is getting ready to graduate from Mid-America Nazarene University. And so we're going to see Casey Harrison and Gabe Hurlbert both receive their first district license. Um, and I do, I want to invite you to that. Come and celebrate. Um, we'll include um, instructions on how to get there in our weekly email. Um, and also, the kids um, were given bingo cards on their way in. These were free. This is not a fee. You didn't have to pay for it. Um, but I am going to use certain key words during my message. And kiddos, listen up. And when you get four in a row, we're going to say that five-letter word, bingo. So let's practice. One, two, three. Bingo. Okay, good job. And if there's ever a point where you're like, yeah, God is awesome, and you want to just shout out a hallelujah, let's make it bingo today. And so he is risen. Bingo. Okay, sorry, you were like, wait, I'm trained to say he's risen indeed. Sorry. Um, Jesus is awesome. Bingo. All right. Um, and also just want to give you a heads up. Our next series is going to be called Renew. And it's a Sabbath series. We're going to be looking at what it means to find our rest and renewal in Jesus Christ, who is Lord of the Sabbath. We're preparing for my um, summer sabbatical where I'll be going away um, for a time of renewal and for us as a church as a time of renewal. And so um, we're, I'm looking forward to that next series. Okay, we're going to be reading from Mark chapter 16. Go ahead and turn there and get ready. Put on your seatbelts. We're going to ride through this gospel. I love the way Mark does it. If you look in um, the NIV, you'll see that there's like small print in, chapter, in verse 9 through 20. Most scholars believe that the original writer of Mark wrote only to verse 8 and left us with a little bit of an awkward ending. And that later editors, as they were writing and copying the, the manuscripts, were like, hey, we need to kind of polish this. And so they used stuff from the other gospels and stories, and so they put that in there. But most scholars believe that Mark actually ended it at verse 8. And so I want us to um, end it there. And so I'm going to invite you to stand as we hear the gospel proclaimed through the, the pen of Mark today. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought or bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. And then very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And they asked each other, uh, um, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? Bingo. Yes, you got it. Yes. Okay. But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which is very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, also known as an angel, right? Sitting on the right side, and they were 
alarmed. Hello. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But, 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 go. Tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. And there you will see him just as he told you. Bingo. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Can somebody say thanks be to God? God. Stay standing as we pray. Jesus, you disrupted and disturbed the lives of those three women and the disciples that resurrection morning. For the things that need to be disrupted and disturbed in our lives today, disturb them, disrupt them. Those women ran away from the tomb with a discovery. He is not here. He is risen. They ran away from that tomb with a message of hope. Help us run away from this church building with a message of hope for a world that so desperately needs. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. All right. You guys ready for the quick sermon before all the other sermons? Here it is. The resurrection is disruptive and disturbing in the best way. Just look at the reaction of the women at the grave. They were shook up. Mark uses these words to describe their attitude and behavior. They were alarmed, trembling, bewildered, and they fled in silence and fear. This is no tidy ending. It leaves you wanting more, kind of like the end of the first Dune movie. Uh, Like it's a cliffhanger. They build and build and build and build, and then the last line is, this is only the beginning. And I was like, really? Ah! Anyways, that's what this is. This is what is happening right here. This was only the beginning of a movement that would sweep the world all the way down to today with the good news that Jesus is not here. He is risen just as he said. We've got the best news on the planet. The beginning, my friends, was disruptive and disturbing. Right? It disrupted their Sunday plans. They were going to properly embalm the body of their dead rabbi. But instead, they would have to repurpose those spices for something else. And instead of preparing their rabbi's body for death, that was their plan for the day, they were going to have to go back and proclaim the rabbi's message of life. You see how the message disrupts. And the resurrection then disturbed their ideas of the world. They had heard about resurrection in the prophecies of the Old Testament, But now it was real. God had kept his promise. It wasn't just an idea or a hope anymore. It was a reality, a living hope. Their ideas were disturbed in the best way. You know what's really cool is that they didn't just get disturbed and disrupted. They got a discovery that morning. The resurrection led to a discovery of a rabbi who sends us now with a message of resurrection, hope, and restorative relationships. At the tomb that day, the women met a young man dressed in a white robe, an angel, a messenger from God with a message from God that they were going to bring the disciples. He is risen. He is not here. Bingo. In other words, death could not hold him. Bingo. In other words, the grave could not contain him. Bingo. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? He is risen indeed. Bingo. Jesus has defeated death, and there is no greater enemy to humanity than death itself, and that enemy has been defanged. Christians live with this hope. Our Savior has experienced death for us so that we can experience life with him now 
and forever. Bingo, this is grace for everyone's sin. These women didn't totally understand this at the moment. They just knew they had a message to carry to the disciples. You know, Mark 16, 8 says they ran away and said nothing to no one, but they must have said something to someone eventually because how in the world did it end up in here? They went and told the disciples the resurrection hope. And did you notice? Did you notice that the angel sent them to tell the disciples and Peter? Did you see that? Yeah, this was on purpose. All the male disciples had abandoned Jesus except for Peter. Actually, he did one thing worse. He denied even knowing Jesus, his best friend. But at the resurrection, Jesus had come back for a restoration of relationship with those who had abandoned him and the one who had denied him. I don't know how you have abandoned or turned your back or denied Christ, but here's Jesus coming back from the dead to restore relationship with you. It doesn't matter how much you've hurt yourself or others or those that he loves. He's come back to restore you and restore relationship with you. This is the great love of our Savior and Rabbi. Not only is death defeated, but relationships are restored. And now resurrection has given us something worth living for, right? In our Lenten series, we talked about what and who is worth dying for. But now we see that Jesus who conquered death and sin for us is the one for whom we now live. We have someone worth living for. The resurrected Savior who died for us to bring us to God, who suffered for us to heal our wounds, who experienced rejection so we can experience God's acceptance. Oh, man. I I was recently interviewed by a high school student on the problem of God and evil, and her final question to me was basically this. If God is good and yet he allows evil, why does he deserve our worship? What a wonderful question. The most compelling answer for me is this. God did not leave us to deal with evil on our own, but entered into our world to experience evil himself and overcame it by rising from the grave. We do not suffer alone. We do not go through pain alone. And we have the promise that evil does not have the last word in this world. God's love has the last word. Word. He loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Bingo. So on this Easter morning, I'm wondering what plans of yours need to be disrupted. I guarantee at least one of you came in this week, this morning, with something that you were planning on doing this week that is actually not for your good or the good of those in this world. And Jesus says, come back from the grave for you to not do that. What ideas need to be disturbed? Perhaps you carry the idea about yourself that you're not worth anything. Well, the proof of the cross and the resurrection is that you are worth dying and conquering death for. Will you encounter the risen Christ and believe? Will you go into this world with a message of resurrection hope and restoration of relationships? If you do not believe, today is the day. Put your faith in Jesus Christ and discover one who loves you as you are but doesn't leave you the way you are and walks with you as you become like him. That, my friends, is grace. And we as a church want to follow him with you on that journey of transformation. Today, as people are being baptized, they are saying they believe in that resurrected Savior. They're saying that they're willing to have their plans disrupted, their ideas disturbed, because they believe in the resurrected Lord. They're saying they will go into the world with a resurrection hope and offer of restoration in all things. May their baptisms be a reminder to us who are baptized. And if we are not baptized, May their baptisms be an encouragement to us to get baptized. Resurrection has given us something worth living for, someone worth living for. Jesus, thank you. You conquered death for me. I couldn't do that. You offer forgiveness to all people. I couldn't do that. When I was running from you, you were right there at the end of the dead end that I was running in. Thank you. Jesus, thank you. 
You've transformed our lives with your love. We pray your grace over those who are being baptized today. Strengthen them for the journey after baptism. Help us as a church support them in this journey as they become more like you. I'm wondering who's going to get baptized because of their stories. We pray these things in the resurrected Lord's name. Jesus Christ, amen, amen. All right, friends. If you're getting baptized today, if your name is Aaron, Trey, Haley, Chase, Stephanie, Kylie, Juliana, Taylor, or Gwendolyn, come on up. Come on up. Let's cheer for him. And uh, choir, Gwendolyn is going to be the last one to be baptized today. And as she's being baptized, you can show your support for her by coming up behind and getting ready to sing God's praise after the baptism. Cool? Got it? Okay? We didn't tell you that, but we're telling that you, to you now. Pastor John, I think you and I are doing the very first one with Aaron the Kidwell. That's right. And so if you're, if you're going to stand in support of Aaron, I'm going to invite you to come on up. Pastor John, you better roll up those sleeves so you can... You do the Duncan. I'll do the questions. Yeah, he's reading this up there. All right, Aaron, we're starting with you. you gonna re- wait, are you going to read that yourself? Okay, don't get in the water because I don't want you to experience what some people call a shock. Um, <laughs> everybody say hi, Aaron. Hi, Aaron. All right, Aaron, read, to, read your testimony to us. Uh, I want to be baptized because I want to follow God's way and Jesus' way. I don't want to follow the devil's way because when you do it, it leads to bad. That's and right. if you follow God's way, there's nothing but good. Yep. I saw Jesus when my nan was in the hospital and she had a chance to die. Mm-hmm. But I saw Jesus do the thing he does best, which is do what he says. And he healed my nan and she, was, she went out of the hospital perfectly fine. Amen. Jesus helped me. And gave me my funny, kind, and strange personality. Hey, now. <laughs> Own it. All right. <laughs> this is why I chose to be baptized and follow Jesus' way. Awesome. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, yep. All right. Pastor John's going to baptize you. I'm going to ask you the questions. And they're on the screen. Do you believe that Jesus' death on the cross cleans you from your past sins and saves you for eternal life with him? Yes. He said, I do. It's kind of like a wedding. Do you intend to rely on God to give up sin? Okay. And will you obey Jesus with every day of your life, relying on God to show his love to others? Awesome. Pastor John. Amen. Woo, woo, woo. Awesome. Praise God. All right, there's a little, little, little hugging troop right here, so go give some hugs. Um, and Trey, Trey Kunkel, you're next. Everybody say hi, Trey. And hey, this is a little awkward, like, you know, we're transitioning between people getting baptized. Um, And so, family, if you're supporting Trey, come on up. Come on up. Hi, Trey. Good to see you. All right, so Pastor Rachel's going to read your testimony. Is that right? I I am. Okay, come on in. All right. Trey wants to publicly show his love for God and declare Christ has died for him and has forgiven him of his sins. Okay. You know what? I want to hear that again. I was helping him to the front of the baptism. Can you read that again? Sure. All right, thanks. Trey wants to publicly show his love for God and declare Christ has died for him and has forgiven him of his sins. That's right. Amen. All right, Trey. I'm proud of you for making this decision. This is something that you really wrestle with, and this is something that you're owning, right? And you're letting Christ be the Lord and master of your life. And I um, am just praying for you as you come up out of the water that you will sense his spirit leading you every day and into your future because you're deciding what you're going to do with your life. He knows, 
and we know what he's done in the past so we can trust him with your future. And so three questions for you. Do you believe that Jesus' death on the cross cleans you from your past sins and saves you for eternal life with him? Yes. You heard it. Enthusiastically. Yes. Do you intend to rely on him to give up sin? Yes. All right. And will you obey Jesus every day with God's help to show his love with your life? Absolutely. Absolutely. Praise God. All right. Trey, go ahead and hold your nose. Trey, I baptize you in the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen. Woo! All right. <laughs> you got that? A lot of water. Trey, you displaced a lot of water. That was awesome. It's a little splashy. <laughs> Go ahead and get some hugs. People that com committed and are behind you. And I love um, our next group. Where I'm, I'm going to invite all three forward at the same time. We have Haley, Chase, and Stephanie. It's a family. And I, um, as, as we're baptizing them today, I'm thinking about Acts. In, in the, the book of Acts, when someone would give their life to Jesus, the whole family actually would be baptized. And so this is a, an incredible moment in the life of this family and in the life of our church family. Um, and so I pray that their stories are a blessing to you, and I pray that you will pray for them as they're taking this step as a family, okay? And I think we're going to do Haley first, and then we're going to do Chase, and then we're going to do Stephanie, okay? All right. I have Haley's testimony. I was first introduced to Jesus through one of my friends, Liz, she had started going to a youth group and invited me to join. I was hesitant at first and went for the first time, and I instantly started going every youth group. I had finally met Jesus, and that's what brought me to this big decision I'm making today. I am thankful for making an amazing connect connection with me and Jesus today. Awesome. <laughs> Haley, I'm, I'm proud of you for making this decision. Um, the teenage years are some, somewhat tough at times, and um, I appreciate the faith that you're displaying for, for your family here and for us as your church family. And I want you to know we're behind you in this decision, and um, we're praying for you as, as you follow Christ through the difficult and beautiful way of the cross with him. And so I have three questions for you. Do you believe that his death on the cross cleans you from your past sin and saves you for eternal life with him? Yes. And do you intend to rely on God to give up sin? And will you obey Jesus every day with God's help to show his love with your life? Awesome. Amen. Go ahead and hold your nose. Haley, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Awesome. <laughs> All right, and Chase is going to be next. When I started going to church with my grandma and during youth group, Fall Retreat, I realized that I love the Lord and his doings. I realized that I'm a sinful person. Now I want, now I want to be a better person and live for God. Amen. Amen. With God's grace, that's possible. And I love that you're putting your faith and trust in his love. Amen. All right, Chase, these are critical years, doing all the sports and all the school things, right? These are pivotal years to shine the light of Christ. A lot of times there's peer pressure pushing, pushing away, right? And I want you to know that greater is his power that is in you than the power that is in the world, okay? And as we bring you up, like, it's a symbol of the resurrection power in your life. And remember that for the rest of your life, okay, Chase? So three questions for you. Do you believe that Jesus' death on the cross cleanses you from the, your past sins and saves you for eternal life with him? Yes. Okay, do you intend to um, rely on him to give up sin? No. Yes? Wait. It's yes, sorry. So it's kind of an awkward question, but the truth is, is like as you're following him, you're saying, I'm done with sin. Are you done with sin? Yes. Okay, praise God. 
Um, and then what about this? Do you intend to rely on him to show his love to others? Yes. All right, Chase. Go ahead and hold your nose and I'll baptize you. We baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, got it. Stephanie. Hello. I apologize for my voice in advance, but um, I'm taking this step in faith for my family. Um, it's been an emotional life, as we all know. You know, yeah. we have our hang-ups and trip-ups in life, but um, yeah. I'm looking forward to leading my family in faith. Yeah. Um, I want to share a story of how I kind of put together my full faith in not just a coincidence moment where it really just kind of came to me that like, you know, this couldn't just be coincidence and kind yeah. of what got me here to Stone Meadow was um, I was a single mom at the time and I needed childcare pretty bad to have my job. And um, I went through a really bad experience at a childcare facility where it kind of messed up my credit and kind of just put me in a really bad position. And I uh, was sitting in the parking lot and I had to actually re-enroll my son into the facility that um, had put me through all of this heartache. And uh, hmm. I was on a waiting list at Still Meadow and I was like kind of hoping and I knew that waiting list was very long. Yeah. So um, I didn't really have any faith into that being the route that we were gonna go, but I'm sitting in the parking lot and literally at the last minute of going in to turn in that paperwork, I um, received a phone call that said we were accepted to come here. Awesome. And from that coincidental moment, kind of really put faith in my heart to hmm. follow Jesus and be that strength in my family. That's awesome. So, Praise so. God for his faithfulness. <laughs> Amen. Oh. going to invite you up. And Stephanie, I, I really appreciate your witness to his faithfulness to you in that moment. Um, and keep telling that story. Um, and keep watching for him to continue to work like that and speak to you and provide for you. Stephanie, I, I'm proud of you. I appreciate the faith that you've shown. It's been tough. Um, but greater is his love than all the things that you've been through and all the things that you'll go through, right? Um, and in this baptism moment, I pray that the joy of the Lord will be your strength, right? That you will be raised up in his joy and that you'll just float in that as you parent and as you friend and do all the things that he's calling you to do and obey in everything. And so I have three questions. Do you believe that Jesus' death on the cross cleans you from your past sins and saves you for eternal life with him? Yes. And do you intend to give up sin? Yes. Okay. And do you intend to rely on God and show his love to those in your family, those in your neighborhood, and everywhere? Yes. Okay. Stephanie, if you'll hold your nose. Stephanie, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. This is like the splash zone of SeaWorld right here. This is awesome. Um, and so you've got, you've got some friends and family that want to give you some hugs. We're really proud of you as a family. May this be a reminder to all of you, um, if you have... Um, bunch of people in your family that have been baptized, maybe talk about that over Easter lunch today. I'm going to invite um, two sisters up. And Pastor Tabitha is going to help with these. They're both in our youth ministry. Okay. Jules is going first. All right. Now, are you reading your story, or is Pastor Tabitha? Pastor Tabitha is. Okay. This is Juliana's testimony. Well, and I didn't quite invite family yeah. up, but family, come on up. Friends, and come on up. And Juliana and Kylie's great-grandmother gets to be here today with them, and so it's a really special, um, special moment for that. Awesome. 
Hey, this is Juliana's testimony. I've always grew up knowing I was Christian, but never understood the full meaning. That yeah. was until I started going to youth group, and I was seeing how God can put so many people from different walks of life in one room to praise him. Yeah. So I started praying, saying, I really want to commit my life to you, God. I, I, see what you, I see what you can do for people, and I want you to do that for me. So yeah. I went to youth group over... What youth group? Every yeah. chance I had. Uh -huh. And then one night I prayed to God to get rid of all of the toxic people in my life, and he did. Mm. Ever mm. since, I could just always feel his presence and could see him working. He is the best love story I will ever tell because it never ends. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Come on up. Whoop. A little slippery now, huh? All right. Pastor Tab, you got the questions too? Yeah. All right. Good, good, okay. good. Um, Juliana, it has been a privilege to be um, your youth pastor and get to know you this year. Um, and you just walk with such um, humility and gentleness in everything that you do. Um, and I think it's so cool that in that same spirit is how um, you heard the small, still voice of Jesus leading you to him and how you left one Tuesday night and you chose that on your own in your bedroom. Yep. Yep. Um, and yep. that is, and so my prayer for you is that um, that gentle spirit will lead other people to hear Jesus' yep. small, still voice in their life. That's good. Okay, so we're going to ask you three questions. Yep. Okay, Juliana, do you um, believe that Jesus' death on the cross cleanses you from your past sin and saves you to eternal life with him? Yes. <laughs> do you intend to rely on God to give up sin in your life? Yes. And will you obey Jesus every day with God's help and show his love? To those around you. Juliana, I baptize you in the name of the Father. All the way down the Hey! <laughs> you did it! <laughs> Congratulations, Jules. <laughs> oh, praise God, praise God. Oh, I love your shirts. That's so great. Is, is Pastor Tab reading your story, Kyle? Okay. All right. Well, I didn't know. I didn't know if you had it memorized. <laughs> She's your backup singer. I didn't know. Like, <laughs> All right. Pastor Rachel just told Juliana that she got Jesus knocked into her when her head crashed into the back <laughs> of the baptismal pool. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> All right, Kylie. Um, this is Kylie's testimony. I've always grown up a Christian, but I didn't really look for Jesus until my grandpa passed away. Yep. And I was just yep. lost and didn't know what to do anymore, but I still continued to go yep. to youth group and grow closer to him. Yep. I finally fully accepted him during fall retreat this past fall Amen. because I was fully able to focus on him and his yep. words since we had no distractions and I was surrounded by people who love him as well. Awesome. Kelly, come on in. Yep, yep, you got this. Woo. Okay, so I'm going to invite you to sit a little farther forward than your sister did. Um, Kylie, I appreciate um, your holy spunk. And um, I pray that as you, as you follow him, that he will use um, your unique life to show his one and only love. There's no one like you, right? And there's no one better than his love. There's nothing better than his grace for you. And so my prayer is as you are baptizing him, that you're reminded that that grace never fails, right? People around you will, but he will not. And so you're saying you're committed to him and committed to growing to be like him, and that's awesome. So, um, Kylie, three questions. You've heard them a couple times already. Um, but do you believe that Jesus' death on the cross saves you from your past sins and actually saves you for eternal life with him? Yes. And do you intend to rely on him to actually give up sin? Okay. And do you intend to rely on him to share his love with those he brings to you in your life? Okay. If you'll hold your nose, I'm going to baptize you, Kylie. And we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey! Praise God. Praise God. Sweatpants like to hold on to the water. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, proud of you guys. Yeah, get some hugs from your family here. Um, we have two more baptisms. We have um, Taylor, and then we have Gwendolyn. Um, and while Taylor's coming up, I'm, I'm going to tell a story. We've been actually waiting for this moment. No, I'm not going to tell the story. Um, but there's a great story. If you want to know why he chose to get baptized today, because um, his grandparents couldn't be with us, um, his dad was like, why, you, why don't you wait till the welcome bash for baptisms? And he had a really great response. Do you remember what that response was? Okay. Well, I'll let, I'll let your dad tell it sometime. Um, but am I, am I reading your story here? Okay. Actually, we'll have um, Pastor Rachel do it because my hands are all wet and funky. Um, but we're going to have you get in while she's reading, okay? I have grown up in a very Christian family and household, and everyone in my family, in my close family, my mom, my dad, and brother have been baptized. Although I have been on the verge of wanting to be baptized for a long time now, and I decided that today is the day, I have repented from all of my sins, and I want to thank God for everything he has given me, and want to give my life fully to him. Awesome. <laughs> Taylor, your heart is has always been sensitive to the Spirit. That's unique. Um, and sometimes life, the things in life tries to try to harden our heart. And my prayer is that like this water would remind you of the softness that we need to listen to and respond um, to God every day. All right? And that my prayer is that you would remain sensitive to the Spirit, that you would hear His voice like Samuel did in the Bible, like Jeremiah did, and like John the Baptist did, and like Jesus Himself did. That you'll hear, this is my Son whom I love, with Him I am well pleased. Okay? I have three questions for you. Oh, they're not on that screen. They're in my head. Um, Taylor, do you intend... Actually, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself because I'm feeling a little flummoxed. I'm really proud of you. So, number one, do you believe that Jesus' death on the cross saves you from your past sins and saves you for eternal life with him? I do. You do. And do you intend to rely on him to give up sin? I do. Okay. And do you intend to obey him and to show his love with your life every day? You will. I do, I do, I will. Yes, yes, yes. Check, check, check. May your life be like that, Taylor. Go ahead, let's, let's do this. Taylor, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hey! hey. And a, a little shout out to Grandma and Grandpa that are at home in Florida. We love you, Randy and Joanne. Um, so, um, here you get some high fives, some hugs. And our last, our last baptism of the morning is Gwendolyn Bodie. Um, if, you're gonna, if you want to come support her, you can come stand right here. And if you're in the choir, come on up, and you're going to stand behind her. Didn't she do a great job in um, singing that, um, that first song? So. Okay. I grew up in the church with very Christian parents. And whenever we talked about baptism, they reminded my brother and I that you don't get baptized just to get baptized. That's right. It's a choice you make when God calls you to it. That's right. I never stopped believing in God. I never turned away or held a grudge against him, but I never walked towards him either. Hmm. I would think to myself often, I should pray. I should read the Bible. I should really pray. I should do a devotional. And I never did. Huh. I started to turn to media to show me what would make me happy. I thought I had such a clear picture of who I should be and how I should live and what I should be doing. But it all left me feeling sad and empty. Hmm. I lead worship every week. I have a close group of Christian friends. I knew that I should be more intentional about my relationship relationship with God, and yet I was too stubborn and unwilling to commit. One night, I sat in bed thinking again, I should pray, I should read my Bible, and I sat there for a good minute contemplating, ignoring the thoughts again. But then I realized this is stupid. I sit here day after day telling myself to read the Bible, and I don't, and it's really stupid. So I picked up my Bible, and I read it, and it felt so good. I took a small step, or maybe it was rather large. I began to read the Word every night. I prayed with my friends at lunch. I talked to God like he was a friend instead of like it was a routine. I took the small step, or maybe it was rather large. And I think... I finally want him to hold me. I'm finally okay with letting go. I finally want to follow him. I finally really love God. I realized that I'd finally committed to the best relationship I can ever have. And right. today I want to share that with the world. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Pastor Tab needs a the mic. There we go. And what a powerful testimony that Amen. you shared. Um, and that is the story of one's life. I mean, when I'm in her pres presence, she ushers others into the presence of God. Yeah. And that is a gift that you have that you just share with us now and share with us through worship. Um, it's been a privilege that I got to know you since you were a very little girl, yeah. um, running around, playing dodgeball, and seeing you mature and grow into who you, into who you are now. Yeah. Um, and we see the Spirit working in your life in so many different ways. And yeah. so my, my prayer for you is that you will continue to usher others into the presence of God, yes. that you will continue to live a worshipful life wherever you are in 
the lunchroom as you say prayers for others to see, yep. and that you will just claim that boldness yep. for all of the days to come, no matter what comes. Amen. Amen. Oh, I have your questions for you. You do. Okay, Gwen. <laughs> do you believe that Jesus' death on the cross cleanses you from your past sin and saves you to eternal life with him? I do. Hmm. Do you intend to rely on God to give up sin in your life? I do. And will you obey God every day with Jesus' help and live a life of love for him? I will. Awesome. Uh, awesome so proud of you this is one of the best hugs to get the after baptism hug it's totally awesome in church um, if you have not been baptized if you're here and you've not been baptized and you want to be baptized please come talk to one of the pastors um, after the service, Pastor Kim, Pastor John, Pastor Tab, Pastor Rachel, myself, anybody who's holding Mike, and okay, but we want we want to walk with you. And friends, um, let's pray for those who were baptized today. Remember what happened after Jesus was baptized? Immediately led into the wilderness for a period of, of testing, and that often happens for those who are baptized. And so let's pray for their support that they'll rely on God through that in the next season. I'm going to invite you to stand as we um, sing this final song of celebration. There's peace that outlasts darkness, hope that's in the blood. There's future grace that's mine today, that Jesus Christ has won. So I can face tomorrow, for tomorrow's in your hands. And all I need you will provide just like you always have. I'm fighting a battle that you've already won. No matter what comes my way, I will overcome. Don't know what you're doing, but I know what you've done. Fighting a battle you've already won. There's mercy in the waiting. There's manna for today. And when it's gone, I know you're not. You are my hope and stay. When the sea is raging, your spirit is my help. He'll fix my eyes on Jesus Christ. I'll say that it is well. Oh, I know that it is well.
have your hands up like this, we want to share with you a blessing as we close the service today. May this Easter day bring resurrection life to your heart and to your homes. May renewal radiate within you and revival emanate through you. May dawn displace the darkness and spring replace the winter in your life. May the God of hope so fill you with joy and peace this Easter that you will overflow with hope by the power of his life forever. Today, go forth knowing the tomb is empty. He has risen. He has risen indeed. Go to serve him. You're dismissed. If you would help us to...